All right, everybody, back with part five of the latest Q and A, um, and I'm not gonna, probably not gonna be able to finish in this part. It'll probably be another part, um, but I'm going to just go ahead and jump right into this because uh, I want to get finished up so we can move on to um, other things. So we're gonna get started in this part with four questions from the Cartoon Man 13. Question number one, are you looking forward to Spectre or Star Wars The Force Awakens more? Um, definitely Spectre. Um, I know, I think someone, yeah, someone had asked about Spectre in another part. Looking forward to that. Um, I'm still a big James Bond fan. I really enjoy Daniel Craig as James Bond. I know that a lot of people are split. On Daniel Craig um, I know there's a lot of people that love him and I know there's a lot of people uh, that don't and that's cool you know that's your opinion you know you have every right to uh, like or dislike um, Daniel Craig that's cool um, I really enjoy him I think he's a great bond I really enjoyed uh, all his bond films um, quantum of Solace, I would say is my least favorite but I still enjoy the movie not a bad film in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, Spectre. Star Wars, um, I have a video, again, coming up about Star Wars. My thoughts, not on just The Force Awakens, but um, many different, you know, things about Star Wars. Just Star Wars as a whole. Um, again, I saw the trailers, I saw the TV, or no, they didn't do TV spots, but I saw the trailers and stuff for Star Wars. Just not interested. Um, I love Star Wars. I've always been a big fan. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are creaming in their pants and stuff about this movie, and they're acting like it's the greatest movie of all time, and it's not even out yet. Um, but this is going to be a big deal, and, you know, I'm just going to avoid it. You know, I might see the film off of a download, um, maybe, but, um, you know, I really have no interest in seeing The Force Awakens. It's just, I don't care. You know, it's just as simple as that. I don't care. Not trying to sound rude or anything, but that's just, I'm being honest. Uh, question number two, uh, what, for, uh, what films do you look forward to in 2016? Someone had already asked this question, but I will pull up. a list and just kind of go through them very quickly um, at least try to go through them very quickly I'm trying to do a few things uh, while recording this video so if there is lag I apologize okay uh, 2016 films here we go uh, Hail Caesar, I don't know if there's a trailer out for this yet. I'm going to check that in a second. But it's directed by the Coen Brothers, and it stars George Clooney, Josh Brolin, uh, Rafe Fiennes, Scarlett Johansson, Jonah Hill, Dolph Lundgren, Cr Clancy Brown, David Crumholtz, Christopher Lambert, Fisher Stevens, and Robert Picardo. Um, once the page comes up. I know everyone's probably, I know everybody's going crazy about Deadpool. Um, that's another film that everybody is like creaming in their pants about. Again, it's not even out yet. Um, Deadpool, I'll probably see off of a download. I'm probably not going to go see it in the theaters. I just, you know, again, I think I discussed this in a previous part, but I just don't like going to the theaters, folks. I hate it. I just hate the experience of going to the theaters now. Everything is so expensive. And, you know, people are talking, and, you know, it's just, I just hate it. I really do. Okay, Hail Caesar. Um, it is about, Josh Brolin is a fixer, okay, working in the Hollywood film industry in the 1950s, trying to discover what happened to a cast member who vanishes during filming. Um... George Clooney is the actor that disappears by a group named The Future, and Josh Brolin has to go get him. Okay, it sounds like a 
a fun movie. I think Dolph Lundgren and a lot of these other people that I mentioned are just going to have cameos. Um, but that would be cool, like, you know, to see Dolph Lundgren, Christopher Lambert in a movie together. They may not have any scenes together, but that just sounds really cool. So that I might actually check out. Um, the official trailer has been released. I will check that out soon. So Hail Caesar does sound interesting. Um, Deadpool again. I'll see it on a download. I'm not going to go to the theaters and see it. Uh, Zoolander 2. I like the first one. Um, so I might go check that out. I, I do like Zoolander. Uh, London Has Fallen. Again, I know it's been pushed back like four times. But um, I'd still like to go see that. I want to check that. I really liked White House Down. But the thing is, when you keep pushing a movie back, that's when people become less interested. So... Um, I don't know if the movie will be successful or not. We'll see. Uh, Dawn of Justice, I'll, I'll probably check that out on the download. Not, definitely not seeing that in theaters. I just... And plus, a movie like that, you know, it's going to be packed. Like, when I saw Iron Man 3, like, it was so packed and it was so noisy... People drinking and chewing on popcorn and talking and just... You know, when I go see a movie, I want to sit down and I want to enjoy the movie. I don't want to hear people talking. I don't want to hear popcorn. You know, I just want to sit down and watch the movie. That's just me. Ratchet and Clank, I might see that because Stallone is going to be in it as a voice. It's a it's an animated film. Uh, Civil War, same thing with Civil War. Probably see that on a download. Most of these I'm probably going to see on a download. Neighbors 2, I did like Neighbors. I want to check that out. Um, the Nice Guys, I do want to see that because it's written and directed by Shane Black, who I've always enjoyed. X-Men Apocalypse, I don't know. Depends. Fuck Ninja Turtles 2, I don't want to see that. Because fu Judith Hogue is going to have a cameo. Oh, that's, that's just awesome. I don't care about... Central Intelligence, I don't know, because Kevin Hart's in it. I don't know, Kevin Hart just gets on my nerves with the acting. I like his stand-up, but his acting, I just don't like him as an actor. Independence Day Resurgence, not really. Ghostbusters, fuck that. Ice Age, Collision Course, I didn't, you know, Ice Age just needs to stop at this point. Uh, there's a King Arthur movie coming out, directed by Guy Ritchie. I might check that out. Star Trek Beyond, I want to see. Born 5, um, probably see that. Suicide Squad, not really. They're remaking Ben-Hur and Peach Dragon. Have really no interest in seeing those. Mechanic 2, I don't know, with Jason Statham. Magnificent 7 remake sounds interesting. Um... It's got a good cast in it. I mean, you have Chris Pratt, you have Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke, um, Vincent D'Onofrio. So, might check that out. Gambit, not really because Channing Tatum is playing Gambit. Really have no interest in that. Jack Reacher 2, I do want to see that. Underworld, Next Generation, I want to see that because I like the Underworld films. Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, yeah, I might check that out. So... Rogue One, not really. And that's it. Jumanji, fuck the Jumanji remake. So, yep, so those the ones I just talked about. Just kind of quickly went over them because, again, I know someone else had asked. So, moving on to uh, question number three. What is your favorite method of watching movies? Um, probably DVD um, because DVD is just easy. You put it in. You get to the menu. Um, sometimes you can't skip the trailers, which I don't like that. I wish you could just skip the trailers on all DVDs, not just some of them. Um, I do love watching VHS and Laserdisc, but I would say DVD because it's the easiest. You know, you can pause the movie um, and it'll be fine. Like, you know, VHS, you pause it and it's it's like jumpy and stuff. Laserdisc, you pause it and you just get a blue screen because that was before they captured the image. Um to what you're watching besides VHS. Um, so yeah, DVD because it's just, it's the most convenient way. It's the easiest way. Um, but don't get me wrong. I love watching 
again my laser discs and VHS but uh, just DVD because it's the easiest it's the most convenient and blu-ray is the same thing to me blu-ray DVD it's the same thing it's just the easiest way to do it so yep DVD and question number four what is your favorite store to buy movies um, around here where I live like I, again I always say that I live in bumfuck Pennsylvania because I pretty much do um, we have two Walmarts which yay for Walmart <laughs> uh, we have uh, Target and that's pretty much it when it comes to buying like brand new movies and then you have FYE uh, FYE is okay um, I get mostly used stuff because um, a lot of the you know I don't want to pay twenty five thirty dollars for a brand new movie when I can go to Walmart and get it cheaper you know what I mean um, so yeah so but then we also have a couple thrift stores uh, there was a guy that sold DVDs excuse me I keep belching um, at like a closeout store but the last time I was there he said he had sold all of them um, he said that he did not have any more and yeah when I went the last time there was like nothing there I was gonna pick up uh, firepower with Gary Daniels and Chad McQueen um, decent little martial arts film fucking Gary Daniels dies for some reason in the movie um, <laughs> But I was going to pick that up, but the DVD was cracked. So I said, fuck that. I'm not, you know. Okay, um, well, Jack Reacher apparently, Jack Reacher 2 apparently got pushed. No, well, I'm confused. Um, I'm, I know I'm, I'm going off topic here, but I pulled it up quick just to see what it was about and everything. Um, but it says it's two dates are here February 3rd 2017 and now it's saying it's coming out October 2016 so I don't know but I do want to see it when it comes out because I really enjoyed the first Jack Reacher sorry about that but um we like I said we do have thrift stores so that's where I like to go to buy movies because I get VHS there I get DVD um, occasionally I'll find a laser disc but usually it's something I don't want or something I don't need, which sucks. And that's just the kind of luck that I have. Um, I never find blank tapes, you know, because people, oh, I found a blank tape. It had the work print version of this movie. Sorry, I needed a drink. Or it had, you know, all these cartoons with the original commercials. I don't have that kind of luck. I never find shit like that. Um... I just have shitty luck. That's just that's how it is um, with me. But yeah, I like going to thrift stores and stuff because, again, I can find VHS. I can find DVDs. Very cheap. Um, you know, you guys will always hear me in my updates saying, oh, yeah, I found this at Goodwill for $3. And yeah, if it's $3, hell yeah, I'm going to pick it up because, you know, it's probably not going to find it that cheap any, again. You know, it's just the way it is. And I've gotten that part I've gotten lucky on. I found a lot of DVDs very cheap. Um, I found brand new DVDs for that cheap. I found some Blu-rays cheap at thrift stores and uh, also VHS. You know, I've just found a lot of VHS over the couple years that I've been going to thrift stores because for the longest time I didn't go and I don't know why. I just never went to thrift stores. I don't know if it was because I just thought that well I don't need to go there you know that's not for me and I don't know what it was but uh yeah like again for the longest time I never went to thrift stores and then one day I just decided to go and you know hey I just oh wow VHS and DVD and and other stuff you know that's why I like to go to them now because you never know what you're going to find and I, I should really start going I don't really go to yard sales and flea markets and garage sales I need to start doing that stuff because, um, you know, because that's where you hear all these stories, you know, from people, oh, I found this and, you know, the guy wanted a dollar for it, you know, I made out like a bandit, that's what I need to start doing, I need to start hitting up places like that, um, you know, so, yeah, but I like to go in thrift stores the most because you get them cheap and you never know what you could find, so thank you Cartoon Man 
for sending in those questions. Moving on now to Dylan Via, who sent in six questions. What are your thoughts about the Star Wars Despecialized Edition versions of the original trilogy? Um, I don't know that much about them. I know basically they are just the original uh, versions of the movie, but they're cleaned up so they look like Blu-rays and, and they look like really good quality. Um, I have seen them on pretty much every torrent site that I get on because there's just, you know, people want them and they're so big. Um, you know, and that's cool. Um, that's really cool. Um, but I, you know, for me, I, I have them, I have the, um, you know, they did the, uh, the bonus editions that came, the two disc set that came with the, uh, the bonus disc with the original, uh, version of the movie. So I have those because... They're the original version. Now again, the quality is not the best. They, you know, they're the same quality as my laser discs. But I'm happy with those for now. Maybe one day I will look into the uh, the despecialized editions. You know, see what they're all about. See what kind of quality they're in, and um, go from there. Maybe I'll pick them up for my own uh, viewing pleasure. So, I've heard a lot of good things about them. I think it's cool that, you know, I think that stuff is really cool. When people go back and they remaster everything, they clean it up. I That stuff, I wish I knew how to do. Maybe one day I will uh, get into that. Maybe one day I'll try to uh, learn how to do that for myself. I think that's, uh, you know, great. I wish I, again, that stuff I wish I knew how to do. Uh, maybe I can... Get into that one day. We'll see. But yeah, I think it's cool how people do that kind of stuff. Not just with Star Wars, but with anything. How they remaster it and save it. And, you know, that's just really cool to me. So, um, number two. What are your top five favorite comic book movies you've seen? Very interesting question. Um, these are in no particular order, but I would definitely have to say... The 2004 Punisher, because um, I thought that was just a great movie, great action film, great comic book film. I love how they did the origin story. Um, it's not my favorite Punisher film, but I think it's the best Punisher film. My favorite will always be the one with Dolph Lundgren, because that's just a, a kick-ass movie in my opinion. But I would have to say um, that... The 2004 film, it is a it is a better movie, in my opinion. I think it's a better comic book film. Um, but um, I would have... It's not my favorite. I'm, I can't... I'm so fucked up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not fucked up as in, like, drunk or anything. I'm just... I can't talk and... can't do anything. Um, but... <laughs> um, I think that the 2004 film works better as a comic book film because um, I liked how there's the origin story and stuff like that. And that part I did like. Like I said, I, I enjoyed that part. I do think it's a better movie, but it's not my favorite um, of the uh, Punisher films. But I, like I said, I enjoy the, uh, the 2004 film as a better comic book film, not as a better Punisher movie. But anyway, um, so that would be on the list. The 1989 Batman would definitely be on the list. I think that's still the best Batman film. I know that all the Nolan Knights, all the Dark Knight fanboys are going to get a big old boner and, and you know, get all excited and take to the keyboard and whatever. But I'm just so sick and tired of hearing that shit, man. It's just like, it, the movies have been out for a while. They've moved on. They're going into other directions with these new, you know, this new Batman film, Batman vs. Superman, and they're going to do more with Ben Affleck and stuff. And that's cool. You know, if you want to do that, great. But, you know, people just need to get off the fucking Dark Knight's dick and move on with their lives. But I still think that Batman 89 is the best one. And, you know, I think, you know, it's just the best Batman film. Um, it did it right. And Michael Keaton was great. Jack Nicholson was great. You know, it just, it took something that was still fairly new at the time because there wasn't many comic book films. 
besides Superman and occasional ones like The Punisher and, and Howard the Duck and stuff like that. And it just did something different. And it if it wasn't for that movie, we would never have had all the stuff that we have that we have now. So I would say Batman 89. Um, I would definitely say The Crow. The Crow has always been one of my favorite comic book films. Um, it's just a great movie. It's dark. It's darker than Batman, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's just a great action film. It's a great, um, you know, uh, comic book film. Brandon Lee was just perfect um, in that role. I don't think anybody else could have played that role besides Brandon. And it's just a, a very great movie. I do think at times that it's underrated, in my opinion. I know that now, because they want to remake it and stuff, people are talking about it more. But I still think that um, The Crow is an underrated movie. And that's just my personal opinion on that. I know people will say that they don't agree with that. And that's cool. You have every right to do that. But in my opinion, I just think it's an underrated film. Um, like the other films that Brandon Lee did. That's just my thoughts on that subject. Uh, four would be... I'd probably say the first X-Men. Um, it's not a perfect movie. Uh, the CGI looks really, really bad. Um, even, you know, compared to other movies at the time. It just looks really bad. And, um... You know, I just really enjoyed the... All, all, besides that, I really enjoy, uh... You know, that movie. I really enjoyed... X-Men, because X-Men has always been, like, my favorite team of characters. And Wolverine has always been one of my favorite superheroes. I remember when X-Men came out. Um, I remember it was a big deal. Didn't see it in theaters. I was eight at the time. Um, but I do remember renting it the weekend it came out on VHS. My uncle and my brother and I, I remember we got pizza and, and watched it and really enjoyed it. And I still think it's the best of the X-Men films. Yeah, I think that the first one is the best. Um, and I still watch it all the time. I really enjoy uh, the X-Men film, the first X-Men film. The, some of the other ones were good, but I still enjoy the first one the best. And five would be like my favorite comic book film, uh, probably Ninja Turtles. Um, it's not my favorite Ninja Turtles film. My favorite is uh, Secret of the Ooze. Um, you know, I've always enjoyed uh, Secret of the Ooze the most. It's just a fun, fun movie. But I would say that the original film is the best one, the 1990 film, because it took elements from the comic books, it took elements from the animated series, and it was just a great mix. You know, here was a film that, you know, a lot of people were looking forward to. It was a big hit. It made more money than any of the Nightmare on Elm Street films, which people still forget to this day, which doesn't make sense. But, excuse me. Um, you know, it's just a great film. And, you know, it was dark, like the comics, but it had a lot of humor. I thought the fight scenes were great. The effects looked great. You know, the suits, the puppets. You know, everything looks great in that movie. I still think it's the best Ninja Turtles film. Again, not my favorite, I like um, Secret of the Ooze the most, but that's just my opinion, um, you know. But yeah, so I would say Ninja Turtles, the 1990 film, X-Men, The Crow, uh, Batman 1989, and The Punisher. And those are really in no specific order except Ninja Turtles. I would say Ninja Turtles is my favorite comic book film. Um, but just all five are great movies, and that's just my opinion on those. And number three, do you think there is a market for adult R-rated animated films similar to Akira, Heavy Metal, Fire and Ice, Rock and Rule, etc. in the United States and why or why not? Uh, very good question. Very interesting question. Um, I want to say yes, there is because people remember those films and they are classics. Heavy Metal is a classic. Akira, Fire and Ice, Rock and Rule, I've never heard of that film, but American Pop, I would say, is a classic. 
Uh, Fritz the Cat, I would, you know, uh, I would say Fritz the Cat is a classic, but that's just my opinion. But yeah, I, I do think there is a market for it. Um, it's very tough because right now, um, it's, uh, you know, animated, it's tough to do because, um, you know, right now it's all about the Disney films. You know, if it's not Disney or like How to Train Your Dragon or a franchise like that, it's not going to be a big film. Um, that's just how it is. That's just what the market is. But I do think there is an interest for R-rated cartoons. Um, you know, even back in the day, there was an interest. So people were, you know, interested in in those movies then and they're interested in these movies now um i still think again you know people are interested in them it's just that now it's a very tough market because it's all about you know again the disney films if it's not frozen or how to train your dragon or you know the stuff that's popular now it's not gonna be successful not really in my opinion i mean it might make money it might get good reviews, but I don't think it's going to be as big as it could be. Um, you know, but I, I think people are interested in them. Um, it's just that it's a t that's a tough market. You know, it's just a, that is a really tough market. Um, it is. So, uh, moving on, number four. What are your thoughts about bronies? Okay, uh, for those that don't know. Bronies are basically males that love My Little Pony. Um, if you like My Little Pony, that's cool. Not a problem. I'm not going to pick on you personally for it. But I just don't get it. I don't understand what makes My Little Pony so appealing to adult males um, I don't get it like could someone explain it to me please um, and I know again people are like well you just said you weren't gonna make fun of anybody I'm not making fun of anybody I'm not singling anyone out I'm not picking on anyone about what they like because I don't like when people attack me for what I like for no reason um, but I don't understand it like I don't get it okay I'm into stuff like Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, uh, He-Man, Thundercats, uh, Robotech, Gundam Wing, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Pokemon. I like Pokemon. Okay. But I grew up on that stuff. Okay. I was a kid when that stuff was around. And it just happened that I enjoyed it. And I still enjoy it. And I understand My Little Pony has been around for quite a while at this point. And I understand maybe as a kid, if you watched it and you liked it, that's cool. That's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure, hey, you know, I like some of the girl shows that are out there. You know. But I just don't get why it's so appealing to adult males. Like, say, I know, I'm sure there's people out there that still like Barney. I'm sure there's people out there that still like, you know, Teletubbies and, and stuff like that. And I get that that's what you enjoy, but I just don't understand it. Like, I do not understand it at all. Um, I just, it's just, I just find it very strange. And, I, and again, I know people are going to say, well, you like Power Rangers. Okay, but Power Rangers was like the it thing when I was a kid, and I still enjoy it because I grew up with it. Um... It helped me when I was younger get through some things. Like even when I was a teenager and I went through some tough times like every teenager does. Um, every person goes through tough times. You know, that stuff gets me through what I'm what I'm facing. You know, even like other stuff, you know, even Ninja Turtles or whatever. It gets me, th you know, if I can just sit down and relax and watch that, have a good time. You know, it helps me get through what I'm trying to get through. And that's it, you know. It's just, and I understand, okay, maybe people do that with My Little Pony, and that's cool, I get that. But, again, I just 
don't understand how to like I'm 23 okay I don't understand how a 23 year old male can sit there and just watch it and be entertained and just love it and buy the toys and blah 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 okay again I'm not gonna attack you personally for it because that's not me I'm not a dick I, well I am a dick but I'm not a dick in that way um, I'm not gonna personally come out and just make fun of people for that if you like that if that's what helps you get through things if you enjoy that okay cool um, but me personally I don't get it like I just don't understand it like Power Rangers Ninja Turtles Transformers uh, Thundercats G.I. Joe it's one thing okay but My Little Pony you know Barney Teletubbies stuff like that a little weird again my opinion not gonna pick on you but just a little weird to me a little, little little strange to me but interesting question next up um, did I say five questions no, six questions what do you think about the Dragon Ball series of anime Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z Dragon Ball GT Dragon Ball Z, I've always liked. I've always been a big fan of Dragon Ball Z um, back from the beginning, back from the old days. I always liked it. Very cool show. Um, don't have any of the DVDs or anything. I know there's like several different versions out there. I would like to get the Rock the Dragon edition because that is like the original dub and stuff. And it has the theme song. And then it also has the first couple of movies. I think the first three movies are on there. So I would like to get that. Because that's like the original versions. I know they changed the dubbing and stuff. And then I'll probably get like the orange box sets. For the other six seasons. But really enjoyed Dragon Ball Z. Always been a big fan of it. I actually have. No. That's a lie. I'm sorry. I actually have a tape. Somewhere. A blank tape that has a Dragon Ball Z marathon. I did not tape it. It just, I bought blank tapes off of eBay. I think it was wrestling. And there's some Dragon Ball Z on there, which is pretty cool in my opinion. And it has the excuse me, it has the original commercials. Which I think is pretty cool. So I will hold on to that. Um, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball GT, never seen those. I would like to. Um, I don't know what the newest one is called. Dragon Ball Kai, I think. Dragon Ball Z Kai. I heard that one's not very good. But I heard all it was is just re-edited versions of the older episodes. So I really don't have an interest in seeing that. But Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball GT, I've, I probably have seen them when I was younger. And I just don't remember. But I would like to one day get all of those on DVD. Um, and I know that Dragon Ball Z, at least, the whole thing was released on VHS, and they did box sets for, like, each saga, so I would love to get those. Like, those would be really cool to get a hold of. Um, so, yeah, one day I want to I wanna get all the... I'll probably get them on DVD first, and then I'll go back and get all the, the uh, VHS uh, sets. So, yeah, I like Dragon Ball. I'm a fan of this saga. I would like to get them on DVD at some point. Um, and the last question from Dylan Via. Are you interested in owning Kryu Sentai Juranger on DVD? Um, for those that don't know, um, Juranger is where Mighty Morphin Power Rangers came from. That, where they took the footage, the first season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. They took the footage from that and cut it up and turned it into Power Rangers. Um, I know that Shout Factory has put that out on DVD. I know that they are getting ready to put out um, the second series that Power Rangers app did, which is Die Ranger. Um, do I have an interest in getting those? Um, I know just you, you just said just Jew Ranger, but I don't know. Like I know my friend, good friend of mine. The guy that I did the Dino Thunder review with, Kevin, he has it, and I know he said it's just 
really tough to watch. I've seen some of the episodes. Um, I had like the first 40 episodes at one point because I wanted to get into Sentai. But Sentai, what I've seen, like there's a lot of cool stuff. But I'm not really the biggest fan of Sentai. I just can't really get into it. Like, I'd rather just watch Power Rangers. And I know, of course, people are like, well, Power Rangers is awesome. Power Rangers is the best because it's Power Rangers. No, Sentai is awesome. Sentai is the best. And you have to watch Sentai. If you don't watch Sentai, you can never appreciate Power Rangers and blah, blah, blah. And I know people go back and forth. And I don't get into all that shit. I don't care about that shit. I just like it because I like it. That's just me. Um, but I just remember watching, like, the first 40 episodes, or whatever, however many there were uh, that I had, it might have been 40, it might have been less than 40, I'm not sure, but I remember just watching it and just thinking it was the strangest fucking show, um, it's just weird to me, it was just such a weird show, and I'm like, why am I sitting here watching this, like, I don't get this. This is just weird to me. And I I watch a lot of weird shit. You know, there's a lot of weird stuff I like. You know. But I just never understood, you know, Jew Ranger. I'm sorry. I just, I didn't understand it. I couldn't get into it. I mean, it was cool to see more action, more fights. But at the end of the day, and to see where the footage came from, it's like, oh, okay, that's from Power Rangers. Oh, okay, they used that. Couldn't really get into it. And I know everyone's all excited. It's like, finally, we're getting Sentai on DVD. What about Mast Rider? What about Mystic Knights? You know, what about some of the other shows that don't have DVD releases? I know what people are saying. Well, you know, hey, it's better than nothing. And hey, you know, we could uh, possibly get that stuff. But I'm tired of hearing that excuse. I really am. You know, everyone says, oh, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. I'm tired of that. I am tired of that excuse. I really am, folks. I'm sorry. Excuse me. People, you know, oh, it's better than nothing. Oh, you just gotta, you gotta deal with that. You just gotta appreciate that. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Tired of that excuse. Again, I would rather have just release Masked Rider. You know, I know that they own the rights to it because they copyrighted the the name when they when Saban bought back Power Rangers and VR Troopers and Beetleborgs and people are like, well no, they don't own it. Or no, just look up the copyright. They own it. So put out Mass Rider. I don't know if it's because uh, the people that created Common Rider don't like it. I've heard that's the reason for it. I don't know. Maybe that's you know, maybe they said, Well, we don't want you to release this, but that doesn't make sense because they don't own the show. I don't know what the problem is there, but, oh well. And Mystic Knights, like, I understand that Mystic Knights is kind of up in the air. They don't really know who owns it, or maybe Disney still owns it, or whatever. But seriously, just get fucking moving on that. Find out who owns it and get it on DVD. You know, I'd rather have that than Sentai. I don't like Sentai. I don't care about Sentai. I want Mass Rider and Mystic Knights. Or Common Rider Dragon Knight. Would somebody release that, please, so I can get it? I want to see it. I sometimes you, I get, you know, I get tired of buying these bootlegs. I get tired of downloading all this stuff. Just release it. Why is it so hard to release it? If you can put it on Netflix, and you can put it on Amazon and all these other streaming sites, then why is it so hard to put it on a fucking DVD? God, sorry about my little tangent there. But would I ever get it on DVD? I don't know. If I found it really, really cheap, like I know it's uh, 30 bucks at this point, but if I found it for less than 20 bucks, even if it was used, I would probably get it out of curiosity, again, if it was cheap. But that's about it. Um, so, yeah. So, yes. Um, thank you, Dylan Via, for sending in your questions and we are going to be moving on now to Corey Margera who sent in 10 questions why did I I don't I'm, I'm, I'm confused I'm hitting all these buttons and I don't want to hit them so Corey sent in 10 questions 
<laughs> Number one is, that's a good one. Uh, what do you think of the beef between Austin St. John and Jason David Frank? <laughs> good question, my friend. Um, this is one that people ask me a lot about, actually, either through YouTube or through other um, sources, whether it be uh, Facebook or or whatever, um, or like people when I meet them in public and stuff. But my opinion of this is very simple. Like Jason David Frank, okay, I, I know Jason David Frank personally, okay? He's a cool dude. Um, he's a good guy when he's not being a dick. Like, he can be a real dick, and I've seen it. Okay, I've seen it in person, folks. This is not, you know, well, I know a guy that knows a guy that knows a guy. No, I personally have seen this. Him as a dick, you know. It's just, that's how I'm, I call it like I see it. You know, and that's how I see it. You know, he, he, he could just be a real dick. I've seen it, and in, 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 you know, in person. Um, Austin St. John, I've met Austin St. John. A uh, very nice guy. Uh, very cool. Um, very down-to-earth. Nice person. Have no uh, bad things to say about him. But the whole, I know that within the Power Rangers community, this is a big thing. You know, everyone talks about it. But to me, it's just stupid and it's childish. Um, for those that don't know, Austin St. John played Jason the Red Ranger. Jason David Frank played Tommy the Green Ranger. Apparently back in the day, Austin St. John had a big ego and you know he would say a lot of things. He would just be very cocky and very arrogant. And Jason David Frank apparently didn't like it and... Apparently they did not get along at all, and there was just a lot of issues behind the scenes between those two guys. None of which has been proven. This is all just uh, hearsay from Jason David Frank. Um, Austin St. John has never admitted to any of this. None of the other Power Ranger actors from that time have said, yeah, you know, this is what happened, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, to me, there's no proof that this happened. There's no uh, hard evidence. You know, it's not like there's a video out there or pictures or whatever. There's no evidence to s sustain that this really happened. Um, so, I think that maybe, okay, maybe there was a time or two where Austin and Jason didn't get along. Um, it happens. Nobody's perfect. You know, we all have our differences. You know, we're human beings, okay? It's understandable if we're not going to get along at times. You know, it happens. But I think that this is just, you know, Jason David Frank is just, you know, there's no other way to say it. He's an attention whore. He's always on Facebook. He's always on Twitter. He's always at a con just trying to get attention and trying to garner attention from people. And honestly, I think that this is just a extent of it and he just you know well the camera's on well there's a microphone in my face well there's people here so I have to act like an asshole and make an you know all these uh, stories up and everything and when I met him you know it's again it was the same thing well Austin did this and Austin said that you know Austin was never on time and Austin the blah 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 it's just stupid high school bullshit these guys are in their 40s and you know Jason Frank is still acting like this it's ridiculous um, again I am a fan of Jason David Frank I met him personally he can be a really nice guy he can be the sweetest guy in the world but he can also be a real dick as I think a lot of people are now starting to realize um, I think for the longest time, people just worshipped the ground that he walked on, and, oh my god, he's Tommy, and, you know, he's the greatest Power Ranger of all time, and I think people are starting to realize that that's a character, and there's also the real person, you know, behind the character. And Austin's been really cool about the situation, um, you know, of course, people always ask him, um, when I went to see him, someone asked him at the panel, and he said basically, you know, he knows what has been said. He does not like it. And if him and Jason Frank were to ever do a show together or something, 
you know, he would confront him and he would tell him that he needs to stop and he needs to grow up. It's as simple as that, and I get that. Um, and another thing, Jason Frank is a real dick when it comes to uh, the conventions. You know, he'll only allow certain people to come to the conventions. He has to approve of all the other Power Rangers, and that's just fucking childish. Grow up. You know, in another interview I saw with Austin, he said, you know what, we're we're Power Rangers. You know, we're all on the same team. You know, we're here to just do a good show and entertain people and, and set a positive message for kids. And when you're doing stuff like that, it doesn't send a positive message. And I get that. That is, you know, Austin is very down to earth, very humble. He's a good person. So I think it's just stupid. It's just Jason David Frank being a dick bag, And he needs to just grow the fuck up. You know, it's he needs to realize that it's not 1994 anymore. Power Rangers is not the number one show in the world. It's not the biggest thing anymore. And he needs to grow up. Yeah, he can embrace it. He can be happy that he was a part of Power Rangers. But, you know what? You just got to chill and slow your roll a little bit and just relax and just embrace it in a good way. Not being a dick about everything and not putting your name on everything and, and, you know, selling fans your garbage and stuff and all this other stupid shit he's done. So that's my thoughts on that little teeny tiny question. So, uh, yeah, that was a good one to start with, actually. So at least we got that out of the way. Okay, so moving on to the next question, which is, uh, what is your favorite era of wrestling? Why is it your favorite? I know most people my age will probably say the Attitude Era. Um, And the Attitude Era was great because it brought pro wrestling really into the mainstream. You know, before you had celebrities in the 80s and the early 90s and stuff, you had celebrities. But um, I think that the Attitude Era brought it to whole new levels. And um, it got WWF and WCW. A lot of people just think that you know, WWF was the top dog. But no, WCW did a lot of great things in that era. The Monday Night Wars, the the Attitude Era, whatever you want to call it. You know, they did a lot of good things. You know, everybody wants to talk about the bad shit. You know, oh, WCW sucked and blah, blah, blah. No, they did a lot of really cool stuff. They did a lot of interesting things. Um, You know, it just, after a while, you know, it's just too many cooks in the kitchen. I think that's what killed WCW. That and the uh, the suits killed it, but that's another video for another day. But I think my favorite would be right before the Attitude Era, 1995 to 1997, really, um, because that point that's kind of when the Attitude Era was starting anyway, because that's when they were getting away. Not like the early part of 1995. You know, they were still doing the goofy characters. You know, they were doing the pirate and the hockey player and the the guy that was a psycho and he really became a psycho in real life and, and stuff like that. But towards the end of 1995, I think once, like, after SummerSlam, that's when they started changing the product. That's when they started realizing that Okay, because at that point, ECW was blowing up. You know, they weren't on pay-per-view and stuff, but people were going to the ECW shows. They were trading videotapes. They were getting television syndication at that point. ECW was growing, and when something like that happens, you can't just sit there and not, you know, listen to that. So I think that's when, when ECW started getting big. You know, I think WCW caught on first because, you know, they did, like, the uncensored pay-per-view where it was, like, no rules and no referees and stuff like that. And then WWF started pushing that button a little bit. You know, Bret Hart went through a table at Survivor Series. Um, 1996, Vader came out and beat the shit out of uh, Gorilla Monsoon. And, you know, I think that that time, like, the middle towards the end of 1995 into 96, you know, that's when it really started getting interesting. People were like, holy shit, you know, this, uh, we can, we can do something here. So that was my favorite. And of course, 97 was a great year. Uh, ECW went to pay-per-view, um, you know, the NWO, like 
uh, yeah, NWO was red hot or white hot, excuse me. You know, they WCW started doing pay per views every month. You know, 1995, WWE copied them. You know, know that about that. And that's really, you know, just very good times. Um, I know I was just little, I was a little kid, but those were great times. You know, the, that's when um, the PlayStation came out, so they had. Um, you know, the, uh, the first, like, WWF in your house, and, uh, WrestleMania, and WCW started putting video games out, and, you know, it was just, uh, on the PlayStation, it was just good times, you know, I think those were just good times to be a part of, and, again, I know most people, pe- huh, I know most people will say, you know, well, the Attitude Era, okay, that's great, you know, it was a great time to be a part of, I love the Attitude Era, but I think right before that, that was just my favorite because I think it's so underrated that time period, like 1995 to 1997. You know, there was just a lot of great matches. There was a lot of great shows. And, you know, people still talk about it, but I think it gets overshadowed because people are like, well, that was, you know, the precursor to the Attitude Era. So we have to appreciate it, but it wasn't the best. And I don't think, you know, I don't like that way of thinking and, you know, but... Yeah, I would say like 95 to 97 were just great times, you know, great times to be a wrestling fan. Number three, what do you think is more important in wrestling, a five-star match or a good character slash gimmick with good storylines? Very tough. Uh, Wow, that is a very tough question. Um, I'm going to say both. Uh, Yeah, I, I have to say both because, you know, I think, I know a lot of people complain now because there's too much wrestling on the programming. But, you know, these are the same people that a couple years ago were complaining, well, there's not enough wrestling. Uh, I think when they went to this PG era, this reality era, whatever you want to call it, it's all the same. I think that's when they're like, okay, well, we need to we need to start bringing more wrestling back into the programming. Um, because... You know, for the longest time, the Attitude Era and the Ruthless Aggression Era, you know, that kind of thing, if you, if you really look at it, they cut back on the wrestling and it was more about the talking. Um, now, it's kind of reversed. <sighs> you know, but I, that's, I don't get that. You know, people, first you're complaining there's not enough wrestling, now you're complaining there's too much wrestling, like, that I never understood, um, but, you don't have to go out there and have a five-star match every night, um, you don't have to go out there and have a five-star match every Monday Night Raw, um, every once in a while on Raw, I think you should have a five-star match, same with SmackDown, same with whatever, uh, pay-per-view, Pay-per-view, you need to be putting on five-star matches. People are paying $50, $60 for this show, and you need to put on the best match that you can possibly put on. I don't care if it's WrestleMania or if it's Elimination Chamber or whatever the, the pay-per-view is. I don't even know if they do Elimination Chamber anymore. Um, but you need to put on the best fucking match you could possibly put on. Um, there's no question about that, in my opinion. You know, especially a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam or whatever. You know, the big pay-per-views. And I know people are saying now, but the network, you know, you can watch the network and you can get all the five-star matches you want, but it doesn't fucking matter. You need to go out there. If you are, if you're serious about being a wrestler, you're all, you know, you're in WWE. You're in the big time. You need to go out there every night and put on the best fucking match you can possibly put on. That's the way I look at it. And again, not every match is going to be five stars. There could be a problem, um, you know, with whatever, whether it's the wrestler getting injured in the match or he's sick or whatever, you know. But the way I look at it, you need a five-star match. Not a, You know, again, every night would be cool, but you don't have to do it every night. You know, John Cena, you know, well, John Cena, is, that's another it's another topic for another day, folks. But um, maybe I'll do a video about John Cena. Maybe I'll bring back the uh, wrestling podcast and talk about some of these other things that I'm mentioning in here. But 
Yeah, I mean, if you are serious, like Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels went out there and put on the best match he could every single night. Um, you know, that's just my opinion. Bret Hart, you know, Bret, I know Bret Hart had some matches that weren't the best, um, but, you know, you should be going out there every night and putting on a five-star match, you know, in your in your mind, okay? Maybe not the fans' mind, but in your mind, if you, if you're serious, if you're passionate about pro wrestling, if you are a pro wrestler and you love what you do, you should be putting on the best match you could every single night. It's just my opinion. Um, and yeah, I think that you need to have a good character, a character that people are interested in, a character that people like, um, and you need to have a good gimmick. And you need to give good interviews and have a good presence and a good look. And yeah, you know, the writers need to do a good story. It's as simple as that. You know, when John Cena is coming out every fucking night and, oh yeah, Seth Rollins got my belt and I got the Cena Nation behind me and, you know, Cena's not from the South, but I'm talking like it, um, you know, I'm, you know, the best, and, you know, bring everybody you got, and I'm, you know, you can't see me, okay? It's the same shit that we've had for the past ten years. John Cena, it gets old. You need to reinvent the character. I know people say, well, he should turn heel. It's too late for that. It is way too late for that. that that'll just, you know, and it's just way... Too late for John Cena to turn heel. It would not work. I do not think that it would work. And today, you know, not today. Um, but, you know. So, yeah, you have to have a good character. You know, and you have to believe in the character. You can't have some schmuck coming out every night, you know, like a, like a Goldberg. A Goldberg would never work today. I know they tried that with Ryback. But look, you know, people kind of like Ryback in the beginning. Now that people don't buy into the fact that he's, uh, you know, Goldberg. Now that people don't care that he's Gold, you know, it's, it's just Goldberg. It's the same guy. Just, you know, a little bit different looking. You know, now people don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean, he's a mid-carder. Um, you know, people, it's like, okay, it's kind of cool. He, he puts on a decent match every now and again. But, you know, once people, oh, you know, and that's the thing, like, WWE is stupid because they basically piss on the fans and they act like we're stupid and we don't remember stuff. But they're, you know, the fans are also can be stupid at a lot of times. You know, again, okay, when, um, oh, fuck, when Ryback first came out, I'm like, okay, this is Goldberg. And people were like, oh, no, it's not, it's not Goldberg. I'm like. Yeah, it's fucking Goldberg. And then they realize, oh, yeah, it's Goldberg. I'm like, yeah, it's fucking Goldberg. Sorry, it's Goldberg. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, but, yeah, I mean, you have to have a good character. You have to be believable, and you got to and you gotta put on the best match that you can do every single night. That's just how I feel, you know. Again, you're not going to have a five-star match every night, but I think that you should go out there and attempt to have a five-star match every night because this is your life, man. This is your life. This is your job. This is how you put food on the table. That's how you should do it, in my opinion. So I think both. Okay, number four. What is your favorite Megazord from the Mighty Morphin era? I would probably say the Thunderzord. I've always liked the Thunderzord the most. Um, I just always liked the design of it. And I liked the finisher. Like, when the eyes would light up and you would see, like, the background and the sword would light up and everything. Like, I always enjoyed that. The original Megazord um, was awesome. Um, but I like, I've always liked the Thunder Zord the most. That's just my opinion. Always liked the Thunder Zords, especially Red Dragon Thunder Zord when it was by itself, when it would fight by itself, which wasn't often, but, um, 
you know. It's still cool. And uh always like the Ninja Zords, but I would say that the Thunder Zord is is my favorite. It's always been my favorite. So Yep. Alright, moving on to question number five. What are your thoughts on Eli Roth? Someone had already asked well, they asked if um I had seen the the last couple of movies that he did. But again, I know I had mentioned my thoughts on Eli Roth. Again, never really been a big fan of his work. I don't like, you know, Hostel. I don't like those kind of movies. I don't like torture porn. Um, I don't like... that. To me, that's not horror. That's just grotesque. That's just, um, you know, shock value. You know, and I know they made movies like that back in the 70s and stuff. And I know that's what he's getting at. You know, I've never been into those films. To me, they're not horror films. They're just junk. You know, it's like, okay, let's um, let's kill this girl, let's chop her tits off, let's shove a machete in her vagina, and rip her head off. That's not horror. That's just, okay, we have a bunch of money for special effects, let's use it. Um, you know, I never liked that kind of stuff. Never liked cannibal films. Just never got into those kind of movies. It's just not for me. Um, you know, just stuff I don't like. You know, I've, I've never really been a big fan of Eli Roth, you know, and I know a lot of people aren't, and that's cool, you know, that's cool stuff. But just never been a fan of his. Not at all. Um, I like the Thanksgiving trailer for uh, Grindhouse. That was cool. But that's about it. I just can't get into his, his stuff. Not a fan. Number five, um, what is the one idea you have for a film? Explain what it would be about, the plot, etc. I have a lot of ideas, actually. I write, if I have an idea, I always write it down. Because, you know, it could turn out to be a good idea, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Not that I would, um, you know, sell my ideas or anything. I mean, that'd be cool, you know, if somebody, like, hey, you know, you want to sell this script, and... You know, that'd be cool. Um, but I write all my ideas down, and there's not one that I would do. There's a lot of ideas that I have, and they're not original um, because it's very, you know, it's impossible to come up with an original idea. It just will never, ever happen. Um, but I think that you just need to get back to basics. Um, I have a lot of ideas that could work for uh, an action film, just a very simple action film. Um, you know, a guy, one idea I have is this guy is like a enforcer for the Las Vegas mob. His wife got murdered a couple years ago. You know, he was just so distraught and, you know, he just took, he went away and now he's back and, you know, he's going to find out who did it and fuck him up. So basically, like, get Carter, you know, get Carter type of idea. And I could see Stallone doing something like that, like another film like that, you know, where, yeah, you know, he's like a get Carter type of character. Something happens, he leaves, he comes back, you know, and he just hunts down people and, you know, that kind of thing. Like, that would be, you know, Stallone should do stuff like that, you know, just old school type of action films like that. And the thing is, people are like, well, you know, nobody wants to see those movies anymore. But again, just go back to basics. That's the problem with Hollywood. They just, oh, well, we just need to do this and, you know, we need to just make it as complicated as possible, you know, and... uh have all these twists and turns in the stories because that's what people like. No, you just need to get back to the basics. You need to just be very simple. That's it. Just you need a simple movie, simple story. That's all you need. It's not hard to figure out. You know, it's really not. But they, you know, they keep fucking up. You know, it's like, oh, this has to be this way, and then he has to kill her, and then kill him, and then go over here and go over there. That's not how it should be. But yeah, I have a lot of ideas for stories. There's not one specific idea that I would have. I mean, there's a lot. I have ideas for 
uh, horror films. I have ideas for martial arts films. I have ideas for straightforward action films. I've created stories like based on properties like Ninja Turtle stories and Power Ranger stories and Mortal Kombat and so on and so forth. Like there's so many ideas that I have. Um, so it's not just one specific idea, but interesting question. Very good question. Okay, next question, um, number seven. If you were a billionaire and could purchase TNA, Ring of Honor, Lucha Underground, or any other Fed, um, what would you do to compete with WWE and Vince McMahon? How would you make the promotion better so it could compete, um, or so it could be mainstream and compete with WWE? Cool question. Um, interesting question. Uh, Lucha Underground, I don't know much about. I know it's on the El Rey Network. I don't have the El Rey Network, even though I was in one of their commercials. Um, but I don't know much about them. Ring of Honor, I, again, I've said this in a previous part, and I'll say it again. Um, the Ring of Honor, is it's never going to be... You know, I think Ring of Honor... I think when it first started, a lot of people were hoping to where it would go. But I think that the first couple years when they had Daniel Bryan and CM Punk and Christopher Daniels and all the big stars, those years were so crucial. And I don't think that they did the maximum that they could have done in those years. Because if they did, they would be big time right now. They wouldn't be on Destination America. They would be on some big network. Um, so I think that Ring of Honor, the problem with Ring of Honor is it, it catered to the uh, the hardcore fans of pro wrestling, the people that love wrestling for what it is, you know, the ECW type crowd, and um, you know, it's uh, it's just it. They missed their window, in my opinion. Ring of Honor just missed their window, and I know people will disagree with that, but you know, they um, you know, they were great when they first started because they had all those young guys that WWE and other companies snatched away. They had that um, hard style. You know, they were very stiff and. You know, Jim Cornette didn't like that when he took over, so he's like, well, we're not going to do that anymore. And I think that kind of hurt Ring of Honor um, in a lot of ways. And, yeah, I think that they should have made a move. They should have made a big move in the early years, like 2005, 2006, somewhere in there, if they really were serious about competing against WWE and TNA. And um, it just didn't happen. I mean, they're still going to be who they are. They're still going to be Ring of Honor and appeal to a lot of different people and, and stuff like that, but I don't think they're ever going to make it to the big time. I think they missed their window. Um, that's just my opinion on that subject. But TNA, I would buy TNA if it was up to me. And I would get TNA. Problem with TNA, said it again, I've said it before, and I'll say it again because it's true. The problem with TNA is that it strayed away from what made it so different, what made it special. The great thing about TNA was you had the six-sided ring. You had guys like AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels and the Motor City Machine Guns and the Latin American Exchange. Then you also had your legends. You had people like, and how could I forget Samoa Joe, I'm sorry, but you had legends like Kurt Angle and Sting and Jeff Jarrett, and then you had other people come in, like Jeff Hardy and Rob Van Dam. And the problem with TNA was, when Hogan took over, everybody thought that, all right, this is it, you know, we're going to be number one, you know, we got Hogan. But the problem was, again, like they did in WCW, they gave Hogan way too much control, they gave Hogan way too much power. That was the, the problem, you know, that is the problem, you know, they gave him whatever money he wanted. Well, I don't like the six-sided ring, brother. You got to get rid of that. You know, can't have the six-sided ring. I don't like it, brother. Um, that's the thing. Hogan didn't like it. He ain't going to get it. Just, that's his mentality. And I think that hurt TNA in a lot of ways. You know, and then they started signing, you know, Ric Flair. What the hell did Ric Flair do for TNA? For years, he shit on TNA. He dissed TNA. The only reason why he went there is because he was broke and WWE were paying him to not get in the ring. It's the only reason why he went there. But, you know, you can't tell people that. 
But anyway, um, you know, so TNA is just in the, now it's in the shitter. You know, Dixie Carter. You know, I think without Jeff Jarrett, they don't really know what to do. You know, Dixie Carter is a moron. She has no idea what she's doing. But her parents have the money, so they're just going to keep spending it on stupid shit. And the, you got talent. I mean, you have um, the Hardys there. You have Bobby Lashley. You have a lot of good talent. It's just they don't know what to do with the talent. So I would buy a TNA. I know they brought back the six-sided ring, but I would get TNA back to basics. I would call it TNA, not fucking Impact Wrestling. That's just so stupid. And I would get back to the basics. I would get back to what made TNA so cool. And yeah, they did a lot of stupid stuff. They had a lot of stupid gimmick matches and stuff like that. But I would just get away from all that. I would just bring back pure wrestling. You know, there's some stuff that they did that was cool. I'd bring that back and I would just create an alternative to WWE. So I would buy them. I would get rid of all the stupid shit that they have now. I would fire Dixie Carter's ass. And I would create a product that, again, could, you know, back to basics and could be mainstream. You know, something, you know, bring in, you know, I know they brought in celebrities in the beginning. Yeah, bring in some celebrities. Bring in some bigger uh, wrestling names that aren't tied down to WWE, which is hard because, you know, WWE does that shit on purpose where they'll sign whoever to a Legends contract just so they will... You know, stay with WWE so they won't go to TNA and stuff, which is su- which sucks because it's not cool for the other guys that want to go out there and help out people in other companies. You know, that's not cool how they do that shit. But you know, Vince McMahon gets away with it because he's Vince McMahon. You know, it's that simple. Um, but yeah, I think that um, you know, I would buy TNA. That's just my opinion. And get it back to where it was. You know, build it back up from the ground up. Get rid of Dixie Carter. Go back to the basics. Go back to what made TNA cool. You know, that's what I would do. And yeah, if, you know, again, bring in some celebrities. uh, Do some bigger shows. Get people interested in the product again. And you can get, you know, that WWE type of money for that. Not the biggest dollar amounts, but you can get some good money out of that. So yeah. Number eight. uh, Do you think we need a new R-rated Mortal Kombat movie? I do. I do not think so. I think that uh, Mortal Kombat the first movie was great back in the 90s. Uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation sucked ass. Mortal Kombat Legacy sucks ass. I don't care about Mortal Kombat Legacy. I know everyone's like, oh my god, this is the best and it's so cool. No. Mortal Kombat Legacy sucks dick. Dick. I'm sorry. It's just shitty. They made Liu Kang, a f- Liu, Kang, Liu Kang a pussy. And it just... It sucks. I'm sorry. It just sucks. I fucking hate Mortal Kombat Legacy. Just stupid shit. I don't like it. Fuck that show. So, no. I don't think we need a R-rated reboot. Leave Mortal Kombat alone. They've already fucked it up beyond all recognition. I'll just watch the first movie... And I'll play the games and I'll watch the cartoon and the live action series because that's the stuff I like. And I can watch Mortal Kombat Annihilation for the fight scenes and the soundtrack, but that's about it. The rest of the movie sucks. And they blew it. They could have had a really good sequel there, but no. Number nine, do you think martial arts movies should make a comeback in the mainstream cinema? Yes, I do. Will it happen? No. Because everybody is obsessed with MMA and the MMA fighting and the MMA choreography where you can't see anything and you're just putting people in arm bars and choking them. I mean, the old school martial arts films like the Van Damme films and the Steven Seagal and Chuck Norris and Jackie Chan, they had their time. Um, It was great. I'm glad that I grew up in the second wave of that, the 90s into the early 2000s when you had Jackie Chan come here and you had Jet Li and um, Van Damme and Seagal were the kings of the the market until the Asian films took over at least. And you had Ninja Turtles and Three Ninjas and Power Rangers and all that and Chuck Norris was transitioning from the movies to Walker which was cool. Um, 
I, I do think they should make a comeback. Will they? No. I mean, there's going to be great direct-to-video martial arts films like Ninja 2. I really enjoyed that. And other films that Scott Atkins has been in. I know he's getting ready to do Undisputed 4. Um, I liked Undisputed 2 and 3. I actually like 3 more than 4. Um, but I did like those movies. But it'll never happen. I mean, I don't see it happening anytime soon. You know, because Ronda Rousey is going to be in a fucking Roadhouse remake. So, yeah, there you go. So, the old school stuff will never come back. I mean, you're going to have films every once in a while. But it won't be like it was before, which is unfortunate. But, oh well. And the last question, I'm going to try to make this quick because this is already at 75 minutes. Um, how would you reboot Batman? Um, very interesting question. Um, I would... It would be a whole series for me. Um, it would be like the first movie. I I wouldn't do an origin story because I know Batman Begins did it. And Batman Begins, I know I reviewed it. And I know it was kind of a review slash rant. But um, you know, I kind of have been thinking about it. And Batman Begins isn't a terrible film. Um I think it's a good movie. It has a lot of good ideas. I just, you know, it's just overrated to me, like the whole series. I mean, I like how you saw the origin for Batman. You don't need it because everyone knows who Batman is, but I thought it was cool. But anyway, how I would do it is the first movie, I would have Bruce Wayne. Um, you know, Batman is still like a vigilante. I mean, Batman's always going to be a vigilante, but he's not really accepted by. Gotham and everything. Like, there would be no bat signal, no bat cave. It would just be very simplistic. And I would have the Joker as the villain. Like, I would have the Joker be, like, in the movie, like the, the 1989 film. I would have him be, like, a, um, a hitman or an assassin for the mob. And he would always leave the Joker card. Like in Batman Begins, you know, we we found this, you know, that kind of thing. That would be cool um, to see that um, as a, you know, in the movie. So, and then Batman, like, goes after him. He hunts him down. He gets in this accident. He, you know, gets thrown in a thing of acid or whatever, like in the 1989 film. He's disfigured, so he, not like... But he, no, nah, I wouldn't, no, nah, I take that back. Like, he gets injured. Like, maybe an explosion. Yeah, and an explosion goes off or something. And they, and Batman is pissed because he thinks he's dead. Because, you know, Batman's not supposed to kill anybody. So, he feels guilty. He feels like shit. So then, he shows back up. And, you know, he's wearing the Joker makeup to cover up everything. And, you know, Batman... You know, he takes over the mob, like he starts, he just kills everybody and takes over. Batman goes after him, he arrests him, and he goes to Arkham. That would be the first movie. And then, the ending of that, you know, people would accept Batman as a hero. Gotham would, you know, accept him, and the police would accept him as a hero. Um, the second film, I would have... Um, and in the first film, I would have, like, Harvey Dent. I would have Selina Kyle. I would have all the different characters. The second film, yeah, Harvey Dent, you know, maybe, like, when the Joker's on trial, like, you know, one of the Joker's cronies tries to sneak in and throws, like, acid on him, like they kind of showed in Batman Forever. And, you know, he has a nervous breakdown. He's upset because he's disfigured. And that's when the alternate personality takes over, and that's when he becomes Two-Face. And Batman is trying to help Harvey Dent because they're friends, like him and Bruce Wayne. But he's also trying to stop Two-Face. Like, I think there could be some really interesting things there. Like, maybe he recovers from the the acid and stuff, but he still, like, paints his face as Two-Face. Like, that would be cool, you know, that kind of thing. It's a different approach, but that would be cool. So the second film, he would go after Two-Face gets him in Arkham. The third film, I would have, like, the Penguin or something to where, like, 
you know, again, like in Batman Returns, he was not wanted, so they threw him away, basically. He lived in the sewers and stuff. You know, he wants revenge, so he's going to, like, kidnap all the kids. Like, that I really liked, because that made sense. Like, he was pissed off because his parents didn't want him, you know, and maybe, like, they go to a a carnival or something or the circus and then that's where he would meet Dick Grayson you know and Dick Grayson's parents get killed Bruce Wayne takes him under his wing and he becomes Robin in the, in that movie like that would be cool like again like that's what I really liked about Batman Forever the third movie you bring Robin in makes sense you know I like that and then the fourth film I would have like the Riddler where the Riddler is like this guy who, um, kind of like in the cartoon, like he works for this puzzle company, and he um, just gets pissed off one day and starts fucking with everybody, starts making up like his own riddles and stuff, you know, and that would be a cover-up for his crimes. Like he would always have a riddle, and then like a bomb would go off, and then he would like rob the bank or something, and then he would leave another riddle for Batman, and Batman would have to, Batman and Robin would have to figure it out, and then they go after him. And the last movie, um, like I said again, throughout all these movies, I would love to have the same characters in every movie because I liked how they did that in the cartoon. Like you had Selina Kyle before she was Catwoman, and you had Harvey Dent before he was Two Face. Like that is one of the things I love about Batman the Animated Series is it's not just okay this guy shows up and that's it. You know, I loved how they had a good narrative there and that's one of the things I think the movies were missing. But the last film I would have basically everything's cool, everything's calm, there's no villains, there's no crime in Gotham. All the the loonies are locked up in Arkham. Um, you would have the Scarecrow would be, like, the head doctor at Arkham. He starts, like, experimenting on people. He starts creating his toxin. You know, Bruce Wayne is basically just Bruce Wayne. He's retired. Like, there is no Batman. And the Scarecrow is just tired of this, so he basically uses his serum on everybody in Arkham, sets them free. They go crazy. They start fucking up Gotham. Um, you know... Dick Grayson has gone on to college and, and whatever. He's moved on with his life. Um, maybe have, like, Tim Drake in there. Like, work Tim Drake into the story where, like, maybe his family is friends with Batman. Like, I know in the comics he was an orphan and stuff. But I think it would be more interesting if, like, they know him. And, like, the same thing happens. Like, his parents get killed. And since Dick Grayson's not there have Tim Drake become Robin and then bring Dick Grayson in as Nightwing. You know, that would be cool. I've always wanted to see a Nightwing movie. I don't know why they never did that. That would have been awesome. Maybe soon they will do that. I don't know. But have that and then, like, bring all the villains back, you know, and then Batman would just, you know, save the day and, you know, that would be the end of the movie. And the tone, like, I want them to be dark. Like, I would do them dark, like the first two films like Batman and Batman Returns I make them dark go for that borderline R rating like make it more violent have more cursing um you know that's what I would want that's just my opinion but yeah I think like five movies would be good and again you have all the same characters in there so it would make sense um you know I just have a good narrative that's just that's it. Just have a good narrative in the story. Um, that's what I would do. But anyway, I hope that you all enjoyed this part. I've gone on way too long, but um, everybody sent in good questions. So I will catch you guys in part six. Take care and goodbye.